Hey guys, I am here today with lovely Katie. Hi. Katie Harnett. We are slowly morphing into the same person. Actually, I think specifically we're morphing into Luna. Yes, yeah, quite probably. She says, <laughs> hello, come now. <laughs> uh, so last year, Katie and I made a video talking about how we met and how we started working together on our children's books. So I'll link that video up here and down below. So if you would like to hear about the origins, of Franklin and Luna, you can go over there. But today, we're gonna to speak about this book here, which is Franklin and Luna go to the moon. Yay. Does it feel so long ago now? Yeah, ages yeah. ago. I was thinking about okay. it yesterday, about mm. what we might talk about. I was like, I can't remember anything. I mean, what even is this? <laughs> So this is a sequel to Franklin's Flying Bookshop, which is called Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon, and it came out in September of last year, September 2018. And the reason I say it feels a long time ago for us is because we're currently working on the third one, because picture books, they take a long time to make, and then a long time with the publisher, and doing lots of different things, which we're actually going to talk about today. Um, but we're very proud of this this book, baby. We like <laughs> it. We like it very much. Um, so it's, um, as I said, it's a sequel, and we're going to talk about the process of creating it because you sent in some questions for us um, about this book specifically but also about writing and illustrating in general. So the first question was how different was writing this book and illustrating this book to the first one? What were the best and worst bits of the process? Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to go first? Uh, I think it was slightly more collaborative um, yeah. because for the first book it was all sort of you written it and then I came on board yeah. and there were some changes but we sort of I guess we didn't know each other as well, whereas no. this one we worked more as a team, which was really nice. Yes. Um, we like each other. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to like both develop the pictures and sort of the story at the same time, which is really nice. The worst part is always that I don't think I've got enough time and I yes. want to like keep working on everything until it's like absolutely perfect, which it's never, it's never going to be. You just have to do it until it's finished, mm. otherwise it would, it would never be done. As Katie said, this was different because we already knew each other. I think still, like collaboratively, I think we egg each other on. Like we, we, and we want to see what the other person is up to, but we don't intrude on each other, I don't think. We kind of no, let no. each other do our own thing because um, we don't want to interfere too much and we trust each other, which is, which is nice. Um, so it was more collaborative in the sense that we were able to be there for each other. The hardest part for me is, I think, pacing and plot that's the hardest part because I know how many pages the book has to be and I knew the outline of the book because I actually wrote an outline for three Franklin books before we signed with our publisher. The The difficult bit is trying to fit everything in and making sure that nothing is rushed, making sure that um, the beats are all in the right place. So that is the tricky bit for me and then I get to have fun with it. Um, and then it gets trickier later on when we, which I think we're gonna talk about in another question, but when we need to come together with the text and the illustration and we need to work out if anything needs to change once those two things have come together. I think my favorite part to write was the list that I thought you weren't going to like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, not that I thought Katie wasn't gonna like it, but it's just, it's tricky. So in this book, Franklin and Luna are going on an adventure trying to find Franklin's family. Um, and this is a double page spread, I'll do a cutaway so that you can see, of the people that they find on their adventures trying to find Franklin's family. So on their journey they find 20 yetis eating spaghetti, 5 vampires reading Shakespeare, 2 giants playing chess and poltergeists in fancy dress, elves playing volleyball, nymphs with skipping ropes, tiny pixies throwing frisbees under microscopes, tooth fairies in ice cream vans, witches baking cherry pie, disco dancing unicorns on roller skates, oh my. And I love what Katie did here with the um, speech bubbles, especially this one, My Kingdom for a Dragon is my favourite. It's my fave. Okay, so what was your favourite spread? So to my favourite was probably the moon dragons. Yes. So it's really nice to sort of have a totally different colour scheme to think about and um, all the friends of this family. There we go. So yeah. And sort of trying to think about the moon. I think I did the one where they land on the moon three or four different times and I sent it to Thames and Hudson. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I didn't think it's quite working. Hopefully they'd be like, it's perfect. And they're like, yeah, it's not quite <laughs> So the third question is, how did you decide on a plot? So in the first book, it is um, it is a plot in itself, but it does set up the scene. So Franklin lives on Earth. We assume from the first book, he's always lived on Earth. And um, he wants to share books with as many people as he can, because he loves reading. But the locals are scared of him. Then one day he meets Luna, who is a girl who loves books. She's read about dragons and books, so she's not scared of him. And together they decide to hatch a plan to use reading to spread empathy and to take a bookshop to the people. Um, yes, so that was the first one. So the second one, I wanted to have 
Not that the first one isn't fun, but I wanted to have more fun. An adventure. An adventure, exactly. Mm -hmm. We've established who they are, uh, and now they can go on an adventure. So, as I said, they go on an adventure to find, Frank find Franklin's family. And um, it's also about books and escapism through books because their want to explore is fueled by their love of books and the adventures that they have read about. Uh, so number four, do the two of you adapt your writing and drawing in order to make a story that integrates seamlessly? Seamlessly. <laughs> Slick. Yeah. <laughs> Slick. Uh, yeah. I need to think of an example though. We do. We do. Um, and we were talking about this before and saying sort of you don't None of the characters are physically described apart from Luna, so yes. um, it gives me a lot of scope to draw things that aren't mentioned in the text. Yeah. Um, and I can make requests for things to be in the illustrations that aren't in the text. So in the first one I'd requested that there were, that one of the villagers was a young boy in a wheelchair. So yeah, there's been that. Um, and then as, as this is I guess where the collaboration bit comes in. So how it works is I write the text. Um, and then we come into the Thames and Hudson office and we talk about illustrations. Um, so Katie will do some rough layouts of things and we can talk about them. Um, and I've asked if, let me find the page, where they go into space, if the text could be this way so that the book has to be turned, so they rock it into space, so that that motion reflects the movement that they're doing, because I thought that would be quite fun. Um, but then you um, can add in things into the illustration that we can remove from the text, because it will work better yeah. in so illustration like in the, format. In the first book where uh, Franklin's gone to the village and he can't see anybody there, but we can see that there are yes. villagers there, but it's not mentioned in the text. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of helping the story along. And I like that. I love that was my favourite kind of book as a kid where you could spot things that weren't yeah. in the text. When we did the beginning of book two there was an extra spread that I had to cut um, which was linking up the first book and the second book um, saying that all the villagers in Franklin now were part of the book club and they met every week and um, they read a book together but uh, it didn't ultimately drive the plot and um, we wanted both books to be accessible to people who hadn't read the other one. So enough linking, then it makes sense if you read the first one, but not enough to confuse you if you haven't. So we decided to get rid of that spread. So when we had the illustration meeting, I think we came up with the idea to have pictures in the back, which you can't, I'm gonna zoom in, you can't see that. Uh, pictures in the background of the first spread to show Franklin and Luna interacting with the villagers that we met in the first book, to show that they still have a bond and they're yeah. still like all pals and stuff. And the next one, they and the are next one, they all there too. Yeah, book club, it's a book club. Yeah, um, but it's not in the text anymore that it's a book club. Okay, this is slightly outside of the book question number six. How many projects do you both work on at the same time? Um, and the longer question of this was, what other projects were you working on while you were doing both of these things? Uh, so the most I've done at the same time is probably three, mm -hmm. um, which was I would not recommend. Uh, I can like, see you having flashbacks. <laughs> like, like it would be ideal to do just the picture book at, at one time mm. and maybe like have something else to dip into if you needed a break from that. Like maybe two is okay, or one picture book on something else. But I was doing finishing one picture book, doing Franklin and doing um, some black and white work, which all sort of overlapped and that wasn't ideal. No. Um, and the other project was also Dragons, which was just really dragon heavy. <laughs> I mean dragons are great but you can have too much dragon. I think also it's difficult because we work with different publishers so they aren't aware of each other's schedule um, and I think if it was a, if it was the same publisher there would be more understanding yeah. there. It's tricky that, to balance everything. Yeah and deadlines sort of inevitably slide yeah. Um, but yeah I quite like having more than one thing because then if you get stuck on something you can move on to something else but yeah that was maybe but you're always doing millions of things. Yeah, but I don't advise that either. Okay. Uh, no, I like doing, as you said, I like doing lots of different things because you can um, weave between them when you've got you've got mental exhaustion on one thing and another. And I like having um, children's books and grown-up books on the go because those are so different. And the rest of the question that I forgot to write down was how long does it take to do one book, like from start to finish? That that was one of the questions. Um, and it's hard because obviously we're not working on it all of the time throughout this period, but it keeps, we'll submit something 
and then feedback will come back and then we have to redo. So let's think about, because it's easier to think about this, the one that we're currently doing because otherwise my brain doesn't yeah. work. Okay, so I wrote Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales. No, we'll go before that. I pitched Franklin and Luna and the Book of Fairy Tales um, in September 2017. I think that was when we signed a contract for it, um, agreeing that we would do a third one. We'd always intended to do a third one, but um, we didn't have a specific contract for it. So we negotiated a contract and signed for it in September 2017. Then I had to deliver the text by March 2018. So that was six months of writing, but not writing it all the time, just you know, doing other projects at the same time. Uh, and then you did roughs by the summer or something, I think? Something like that. And then Katie did final illustrations by January 2019. Yeah. And then it's coming out September 2019. So all in all, that's two years. Yeah. That's a long time. That's a long time, yeah. So two years. Um, and within that two-year period, um, I submit the first draft of the text. Then we have a conversation about it. Katie will do roughs. Then we'll have a conversation about the text and the roughs and how those match up. And now Katie's done the final illustration and I got an email this morning before I came here about any slight amendments to the text now that those illustrations are in place. Um, I'm sure I'll have illustration amendments yes. as well as always sort of bits and pieces that you need to change or move. It's an ongoing thing in our yeah. lives for a long time. Yeah, it's quite nice. It's it always nice. nice to sort of bubbling over. It's just there. something's happening. <laughs> yeah, Franklin's like getting up to something yeah. over in the corner. And it's, either, it's sort of like periods of like waiting and not too much happening and then very and frantic then take periods of work <laughs> yeah. and then you wait a bit more. Question number seven was, will there be more Franklin books? Yes. yes. <laughs> so there are two out currently, um, Franklin's Flying Bookshop. Oh, thank you for modelling, Katie. Ah. And then in paperback with a quote from Jacqueline Wilson on which we're still not over and we're very excited about it. <laughs> we really like that she likes Franklin. Uh, and then Franklin and Luna go to the moon which is out a and then the third book so sorry the paperback of the sequel will be, will be coming out sometime this summer and then the hardback of the third book will be coming out on the 3rd of september i think that was what we were told i don't know i think the 3rd of september, september yes um, which is called franklin and luna and the book of fairy tales and uh, i don't know if we can say what it's about yet it's franklin's birthday and uh there's a bookshop involved and a book, a book of fairy tales <laughs> um, and I'll leave it at that I'm sure the blurb will be available soon um, yes so we'll be able to show you the cover in the blurb soon uh, and then I don't know there might be more Franklin books in the future but we've both got other projects that we would like to work on in the meantime uh, someone said I bought Franklin 2 from Italy will Franklin 3 be available in Italian 2 um, that's not up to us uh, and we'll know more about translations after Bologna mm. But hopefully. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Uh, it's really cool when we get parcels in different languages. Yes. It's very exciting. Um, so Bologna Book Fair is the big children's book fair, and that's in, is it March or April this year? Uh, so it's in April, start of April. April, okay. So that's where Thames and Hutter will try and sell uh, foreign rights for the third book. So we will know more after then, but fingers crossed, hopefully. Uh, question number nine, Katie, um, do you find it hard working in traditional mediums when so much of the world now is digital? Uh, no, uh, not hard, but I think uh, you just adapt to, so I still deliver all my work digitally. Um, what I normally do is I hand paint it and I um, sort of do that all in one sort of painting and then I scan it and then I edit it on Photoshop anyway um, cause I'm quite a messy painter and just to make sure everything's sort of as I want it with the digital file and then I send that off. Recently I've been doing it slightly differently with Thames and Hudson. They, I send the originals to them and they have them photographed professionally which is very exciting. Uh, cause Does my... it stress you about it getting lost in the post? Yeah. yeah I wouldn't be stressed about <laughs> but that. They, it's really exciting. They send a courier to my house. Ooh. Which is like um, a person either on like a motorbike or in a car and they like I hand it over precious parcel. Um, and they freshly photograph it and send me the digital files back to edit and they're so much sort of crisper. So it'll be interesting actually seeing if the third book is sort of different, has a different feel or not. If you were a dragon, what would you hoard? Mugs. Yeah, we both said this earlier <laughs> when we were looking at questions. Mugs, definitely, 100%. Uh, number 11, age range. How do you establish age range for a book? That's an interesting question. Um, so Franklin is age ranged, age ranged at three to seven. And I personally as a bookseller, hate age ranging um, because I think on picture books, it's I, I, I do understand the purpose. It's to guide 
the buyer. Um, but age ranging, it can, it can be limiting, um, especially in middle grade and older, beca because people have different reading abilities for different reasons. And you don't want to discourage a child from reading a book because they think it's like technically like age beneath them, because um, that won't encourage them to read. Um, yeah. So yeah. But anyway, how do we age range? Uh, we don't. I've always left it up to publishers. Yeah. So they have their own guidelines. So three to seven is quite broad. So three would be for the kids who are having it read to them and then seven people who can read it maybe to themselves. Um, have they yeah. ever said to you, take a word out, we think it's too complicated, anything like that? Oh, I think maybe, yes. But I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been... <laughs> you got creme brulee for I it. I think it was creme brulee. <laughs> it might have been creme brulee in the first book. Uh, there is a tongue-in-cheek reference, uh, creme brulee. Um, but uh, my view is that there should be words that kids don't understand. Not loads, obviously, because then it's off-putting, but it's fun for them to ask what that is. Also, kids, even if they don't understand something, it's, that can be funny. Yeah. They're like, that sounds amusing. Creme brulee sounds funny. I had a very sweet email from a woman whose kids had been really enthusiastic about creme brulee, so they had had their first creme brulee after reading Franklin, and they wanted to tell me that it was really yummy. <laughs> so it's really cute. Um... And then also maybe linking in with number 12, what criteria do you have for, what do you, criteria do you follow for editing? First we get feedback from uh, our editor and then we get feedback from the whole company. They normally take it to a meeting and read it to people. And then we get feedback from foreign rights. Yeah. Which is, uh, can be difficult because that can be much further along the line when everything is much firmer. Yeah. Uh, always <gasps> working on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's important because it is. It's, it's such a huge amount of the sales is to coalitions in different countries. So you kind of have to, if everybody's saying the same thing, you have to sort of take it on board. I don't think we've had a big problem with that though, have we? There was there was a, a, a problem flagged with the third book before I'd written it, Franklin and Luna, in the book of fairy tales, in that. If I was referencing fairy tales, would I make sure that those fairy tales were known in other places? Because obviously, um, the fairy tales that we know in Europe are very Eurocentric, mostly to do with forests, etc. But the way that the book has worked is I'm not actually by name referencing specific fairy tales. Uh, I have characters who people may recognise from fairy tales, but you don't have to know who those people are. Um, so I had highlighted that that wouldn't be a problem. To do with editing, and probably to do with, uh, to link in with the first question, which is like the, the best and most difficult parts, um, is rhyming in Franklin. <laughs> in Especially in Franklin's Flying Bookshop, the rhyming is very off kilter. So there is no specific rhyming pattern. And um, I think my editor got quite cross because she's asked if I could send over the metric and the rhyming schemes so that she could understand it. Um, and I said, well, there isn't one. I am um, having a fun time with it. So there are some half rhymes in places. There are some full rhymes. Um, but I wanted it to be unpredictable because I think children actually enjoy that more. That's a, um, a, sta a statement. That's a statement. <laughs> children like that because they can't guess what's going to happen. I think sometimes in uh, rhyming for children, you can get to da dum 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 and you get swept up in the beat of it so that the words almost come second and you, you end up limiting yourself quite a lot. And when I write poetry for grown-ups, I generally write in free verse anyway. So uh, when I sent over the first book and when I sent over the second book and when I sent over the third book, I had to highlight all of the rhymes and half rhymes for my editor in different colours so that she could see where they were. So there's a line in uh, Franklin 3 which is, they find themselves inside a forest, it smells of paper, ink and porridge. And that's a half rhyme, but some people might disagree that that was a half rhyme. And also this is something that I didn't know but we spoke about afterwards. Some publishers don't like books to rhyme at all mm, yeah. um, for foreign translations. And Franklin in foreign translations doesn't rhyme because uh, translators have made the choice to translate it like verbatim as it Literally. is yeah um yes so katie yes. do you have any advice for illustrators who are about to graduate um do not despair <laughs> uh i mean it's obviously it's really different everyone's in different situations i think just keep on working um it can feel like a really big push up to graduation and then sort of into the abyss of, of the real world <laughs> but just keep making work is the most important thing because you're always improving and so as long as you're still making work you're still getting better and try as much as you can to sort of um 
get things in front of people, which is really hard. I think mm. that's probably the hardest part, but sort of you know, you use social media and all that kind of stuff. And I guess send mail outs. I've sent mail outs and they, they've they never worked for me, but they do for some people. And I know that sort of lots of publishers do look at the, the posts that they get and they might stick it up and look at it months later and think of you for a project. So just keep trying is my yeah biggest advice. Oh, and I'll throw in a piece of advice from Holly Exley. Create the work you want to be commissioned for. Yes, because there's nothing worse than doing something that you think people want and not enjoying it and then being commissioned on the basis of something that you don't really want to be doing and it's never going to be any good. No. Oh, question number 14 was how do you do events because there's two of you? Better. <laughs> yes, they're more fun. <laughs> um, so Katie and I do events for uh, bookshops when the book comes out for a limited period of time we can do we can put some time aside to do events um, so we do that for a couple of months after publication on a weekend normally um, and then we do events at festivals too um, we can tend to do more of those throughout the year because festivals are at various times yeah and at mm. schools um, and we can do more of those because the school work and the festivals are paid work so when you do events in bookshops you do that for free in the hope that you sell books and then events at book festivals and in schools are paid work. Um, and we tend to do a story-based activity and then an illustration-based activity. What's been one of your favourite events that we've done? Ooh, um, I quite liked, we did uh, one with Pop-Up. Yeah, that was what um, I was going to say, that was so fun. <laughs> uh, where we did it in the Hackney Pirate space, which is so cool. And then we all sort of, we did storytelling, we got really involved, and then we did, I sort of, drew a big dragon based on their suggestions enormous on the floor and then they all sort of helped to decorate it or piled in colour it in yeah. um, that was really fun that was really fun and it's great to ask the kids so when they were doing that then I went back up onto the stage with the flipboard and was asking them questions about the dragon so Katie had asked them you know do you want a big dragon do you want a small dragon long tail long nose whatever and they would pick so Katie drew that and then when they were colouring it in I was asking, what do you want your dragon to be called? And they decided he should be called Johnny Rockstar. <laughs> and I was Googling, like, is Johnny Rockstar a thing? Because someone said it, it was such like confidence yeah. that I thought it must be a character from TV, but it wasn't. They decided that he lived in space, that his best friend was a spider, that he enjoyed doing the washing up and playing football. And kids just come up with the best mm. stuff. They're so great. Um, so that was really fun. And we've done some uh, really nice events in schools as well. We did one for World Book Day last year. Um, and I just love it sometimes at the end of events where a kid who you're not sure has been that engaged with, because you know you have you have some children who really want to uh, answer questions and and show that they are like engaging. They're used to, I guess, performing well like in mm. certain situations. And you get the quieter kids who you're not sure you're not really sure if they're enjoying it that much. But at the end of our school visit last year, there were some of those kids who, when we went to leave, just came and like hugged us tightly around like so, our hips, and I'm just like, oh. My it's so precious <laughs> so that's really really lovely and the final question is what is next what's next for you katie so i have a picture book that i wrote and illustrated that's coming yes. out in march march the first uh which is called monty a, and the poodles do you have a copy i do should i run and get one yes yeah just stay there i will stay here oh i like how it's shiny it's good isn't it monty, it's just monty that's shiny i love so that monty is shiny and the bows are shiny <gasps> Like I love that. We'll do, I'll do a close cover. up so that you can see. Very, very beautiful. Yep. So, this is your third yes, book with flying eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's out on March the 1st. It's about Monty, a street dog, who meets Ginger, who's a poodle who likes to play football and um, sort of get a bit mucky. And they want to be friends. They've got a lot in common, but the world sees only their differences and they have to overcome some obstacles. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go buy it. I'll link it in the description box down below. Go and check it out. So you're doing that, and then you were thinking of doing a graphic novel, maybe? <laughs> yes, it's always on the like yeah. one day list, mm -hmm. um, but I have some time, so it'd be really nice to to do that. Um, but it's very time consuming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be really nice to do that, she says, shaking. <laughs> exciting um, slash terrifying. Yeah, yeah I know. it's un under the same sort of novel auspices of exciting and terrifying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm doing a novel at the moment. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. uh, yay! Um, and uh, have a poetry collection coming out in April called Ooh. The Girl Aquarium. I'll insert a picture here. Here it is. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and I'll link it down below if you would like to go and find out more about that. Oh, before before we go, I'm gonna insert a bit here which you guys might like to see because I always find this really fascinating of Katie's paintings for the second book. And you have some sketches as well. Yep. Yeah, so cool. So I will insert a clip here so you can see some behind the scenes things. So this is all the same scene. Initially we were gonna have a half page of Luna in her room reading with Neil Armstrong the tortoise. And then we decided it would be the first double page spread. So this was the rough. And then I painted it one time. Uh, this one. Um, A3 and I felt like it was fine but it wasn't great and it's smaller than the actual print size of the book and I thought actually for sort of detail and everything I wanted to try it a bit bigger I wasn't thrilled with all the colours so then I did it again at A2 which is how it sort of turned out in the end so some of these are scenes that didn't are in it or are sort of not quite the same in the final one so in this one they're actually in their garden in the book I think yes and this oh, well, this is the book, book club, club the book club that yeah. didn't happen here. Yeah. Also, I love this. Like, <laughs> I know that you you think that that's messy, but I really love it that you can see all of the colours that you have used. Uh, and this is also something that is in the text. Uh, sorry, isn't in the text, but is in the drawings that we didn't talk about in the uh, video. But um, we decided that the fireflies and the mice from the first book and the bats <laughs> would be in picture form in the second book even though they're not spoken about in the text so that those who've read the first book can notice those things okay well we are gonna go drink some more tea in, from this very fancy teapot look at this teapot i love this it was still warm i love this love it great okay we're gonna go drink some more tea i was gonna say eat some more donuts but i've already had two I can't you have any third. No, 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 no. Um, yes, so um, if you haven't checked out Franklin's Blind Bookshop and Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon, please do check them out. That would be amazing. They're available in, I think, 11 or 12 different languages. I will leave links in the description box down below. Um, and I never know how to end these things. Great, excellent. See you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye. 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 bye.